and Trump derangement syndrome. And it isn't just that the media is telling you what to think using terms like undocumented, never ever even asking how many lives are spared every year because of a firearm. CNN the other day had a counter about the number of mass murders, and I suggested that maybe they ought to have a counter of the number of people whose lives are saved by a firearm, but uh, no such thing. So not only do they tell you what to think, never, ever, ever quoting the overwhelming consensus of economists, for example, that minimum wage laws hurt. Never quoting people like George Borjas, who's nobody's Trump supporter, about the winners and losers behind illegal immigration, most notably losers, Americans with high school or less education living in the inner city. Never mention it. They just don't tell you how to think or what to think. They tell you what to think about. So, for example, when the New York Post story broke days before the election, it was squashed. So a substantial percentage of the country never, ever saw that story. And I saw a study that said if enough Biden voters did not know about the story and said had they known about the story, they would not have voted for him to have substantially changed his election so there wouldn't have been any doubt whatsoever that Trump won. So they don't just tell you what to think. They tell you what to think about. And that brings us to this story that MSNBC breathlessly reported. About the protesters being forced out of Lafayette Park because arrogant Donald Trump wanted to just wade in there and hold up the Bible. Remember this? I want to bring in Garrett Hake now, who has also been following these protesters in Washington, D.C. Gary, you were right there a couple of minutes ago uh, when that when that order apparently was given to clear out those protesters. Um, take us through again what happened in those moments. And there's this question. You're past that 7 p.m. curfew now in Washington, D.C. Has that made a difference to these protesters? Are the streets quieter now because of this? Well, Steve, I think the streets are quieter now because of the mounted police and the tear gas. I want to be super clear about what did and didn't happen right there. Nothing happened on the side that the protesters were in. I was standing with those protesters. Okay, so it goes on and on and on about the protesters, tear gas, and Donald Trump forced him out because he wanted to walk over there and hold up a Bible. Associated Press. An internal government investigation has determined that the decision to forcibly clear racial justice protesters from an area in front of the White House last summer was not influenced by then-President Donald Trump's plan to stage a Bible-toting photo opportunity at that spot. The demonstrators were protesting the death of George Floyd, writes the Associated Press. Half hour after the Washington protesters were forced from the area with pepper bullets and flashbangs. No tear gas, by the way. Trump walked across Lafayette Park among, amid the lingering scent of pepper spray and delivered a short speech while holding the Bible in front of St. John's Church. Park Officials had already planned to clear the area and had begun implementing the operational plan several hours before they knew of a potential presidential visit to the park. End of quote. Inspector General Mark Lee Greenblatt said in a statement accompanying the report. So now, instead of apologizing, all NBC does is just put out a new story as if they didn't make the first story. This just came out last night. Listen to NBC's reporter. The report doesn't say that they accelerated their efforts. It just says that Barr went down there and kind of tried, tried to get them to do that. But, but it actually says that they continued to do. At that point, you know, they were engaging with the protesters. They were pushing them out. Yeah. It was full on. And so um, they didn't, the report doesn't say that they responded or did anything differently because of what the attorney general said. Um, but it, it does, and it also does make clear that there was some violence on the part of protesters in the days leading up to this. There was see, see how he's not getting to the point? Property destruction. He gets to it eventually. Stick, stick around. 
49 Park Police officers were injured. So these were not a completely nonviolent protests, but the eyewitnesses on the scene that day really painted a picture of, hey, things were pretty cool right. until the cops decided to move in. And, you know, the narrative took hold, and it was widely reported across the mainstream media that Barr ordered this thing to clear the park for Trump. And that's not right. what happened, according to this independent Inspector General report, Chuck. Uh, uh, right at the very end. And, 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 and that's not what happened, Chuck. These guys went ballistic. They're being forced out because of Trump. Pepper sprayed. Innocent protesters for George Floyd. Now, two days after the so-called insurrection, New York Times, quote, he dreamed, it's a headline, he dreamed of being a police officer, then was killed by a pro-Trump mob. Subheadline, the death of Brian Sicknick, a military veteran, an experienced Capitol Police officer, amplified the tragedy of Wednesday's riots. Quote, with a bloody gash in his head, Mr. Sicknick was rushed to the hospital, placed on life support. Law enforcement initially said Mr. Sicknick was struck with a fire extinguisher. Right? It was January 8th, two days after the alleged insurrection. And, of course, you know the president was impeached second time. House Democrat managers cited the death of Sicknick. Quote, was killed by rioters, close quote. The article of impeachment, quote, presidential election unlawfully breached and vandalized the Capitol, injured and killed law enforcement personnel. Washington Post, April 19, 2021. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who engaged rioters, suffered two strokes and died of natural causes, was not hit with a fire extinguisher, suffered two strokes, died of natural causes a day after he confronted rioters. No evidence whatsoever he was struck with anything. Headline again, New York Times, two days after the so-called insurrection. He dreamed of being a police officer, then was killed by a pro-Trump mob. I wonder how many Pulitzers they won for that one. These people are just too much. Now, I was asked about hydroxychloroquine. Here's what Victor Davis Hansen said about it. Quote, doctors in poor countries such as India were attracted to hydroxychloroquine an old, cheap, anti-malarial drug, generally regarded as safe. When stories surfaced that both American and European doctors had independently claimed clear effectiveness of the drug, Trump, in reaction, tweeted, it couldn't hurt to take the drug. Furor ensued. Outrage followed. And soon, the time tried hydroxychloroquine was considered an existential, existential evil on par with Trump himself. If prior to Trump, the drug had been hailed by the United Nations as an essential medicine, especially in poor countries, suddenly it was now considered more than a little toxic witch's brew. Fauci's legions demonized the drug and soon it proved illegal for doctors to prescribe hydroxychloroquine for off-label usage, end of quote. So Trump derangement syndrome specifically and directly got people killed. This thing on? So wrong about the so-called Lafayette part, Wrong about what happened with Brian Sicknick. Wrong about hydroxy. Any apologies? I'm waiting.